What resides in the huge voids between galaxies? In the vast deserts between the cities of stars, there can sometimes be found small oases of star formation, usually powered by stray intergalactic gas clouds. One of the stranger instances of this is the Gaifo region, named after the four authors of the paper which first describes it, Gerhardt, Arnaboldi, Freeman and Okamura. It was discovered in 2002 during a survey for planetary nebulae in the intergalactic space within the Virgo cluster, where it was classified as a candidate compact H2 region. This was confirmed after analysis of the object spectrum, which gives us an idea of the proportions of different elements in this object. The Gaifo region, located about 55 million light years away, is estimated to be about seven parsecs across or just under 23 light years across. This nebula surrounds and is ionized by a small 3.3 million year old star cluster with a total mass approximately 400 times that of the Sun, which is certainly on the low end, suggesting a total population of 1 to 1.5 thousand stars. One or two O-type stars are predicted to exist in this cluster, and the entire object shines with the combined brightness of about 54,000 suns. Due to the relatively low mass and smaller gravitational force of the star cluster, the nebula is probably expanding and dispersing into the intergalactic medium right now. What is so odd about the Gaifa region is that this seemingly normal nebula is not located inside a galaxy as one would expect, but completely alone in intergalactic space. Assuming it is at the same distance from Earth as its closest known galaxy in the sky, NGC 4388, the small stellar nursery is perched over 55,000 light years, or 17 kiloparsecs, above its galactic plane, and it could be much further from said galaxy, and indeed any galaxy at all, if its distance to Earth is different than that of NGC 4388. So, where and how did this young structure form in such a secluded region? At the time of discovery, the most plausible explanation for the Gaifo region's position and velocity was that the object was not bound to NGC 4388 and was moving in an entirely different orbit within the Virgo cluster, which would mean that the Gaifo region would be an example of truly intergalactic and intracluster star formation. However, the region's very similar radial velocity compared to NGC 4388 suggested it may in fact be bound to the galaxy, representing a small star forming knot in the far outer halo of NGC 4388, far from any other star forming activity within the galaxy. A clue to the origin of this small stellar nursery was uncovered with the discovery of about 60 million solar masses of atomic gas located in the same region slightly further above the galactic plane of NGC 4388. This was discovered one year later, in 2003. This is likely connected to a plume of hydrogen alpha emission extending towards the same general direction to the northeast of the galaxy, discovered in 2001. How did so much gas end up so far from the galaxy and so far inside the hostile intergalactic medium? This cloud of atomic gas is likely the result of ram pressure stripping away the gas of this galaxy as it orbits within the Virgo cluster, where the intergalactic gas density is high, pulling away the galaxy's gas and leaving it with only 10% of its original gas content. The ram pressure stripping then results in a load of gas trailing behind the galaxy. As for the Gaifo region itself, it was likely part of that cloud of atomic gas, pushed away from its host galaxy via ram pressure stripping. This was until recently, when this cloud collapsed, possibly after getting compressed by the hot intergalactic medium, forcing its gas together into dense clumps which collapsed under gravity, forming nascent stars. This stellar nursery is likely falling back into NGC 4388 because of its higher surface density, meaning it is less subject to the ram pressure wind. As of 2002, a total of 17 intergalactic star-forming sites had been identified within the Virgo cluster, suggesting a total of about 1,000 such objects throughout the cluster. This estimate is probably higher now, with the discovery of more similar objects in this cluster, such as the blue blobs, which I will be talking about in a future video. 
intergalactic stellar nurseries in general are important in relation to the intergalactic medium and its metal content, since the massive stars in these intergalactic star forming sites will explode in supernovae, they will be distributing their heavy elements throughout the intergalactic medium, and this is the main way that it is enriched with metals. The bulk of the metal content in the intergalactic medium is believed to have formed in this way, during the early universe, at about the same time as the stars which formed in the bulges and halos of galaxies, which are famously old structures. Therefore, we expect that stars in these isolated regions will have similar metallicities to stars in the aforementioned galactic structures. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more space content.